The collapse of the Soviet Union is one of the most consequential events in global history, but it has not developed as hoped by the anti-communists and progressives, both in Russia and around the world, who engineered its demise in the 1990s. The hope for Russia was threefold. First, that a liberal market would emerge. Second, that democracy would prevail. And third, that the country would be integrated into the global community as an important partner. However, what has materialized is the exact opposite. With the state back in command of the economy and utilized for the self-enrichment of Vladimir Putin and his allies, elections are now a sham, and Russian hard power is used to project force against its neighbors, while funds from money laundering are used to corrupt its Western rivals. Keep watching and I'll explain how a low-level intelligence officer rose to become president and how he installed his KGB and Mafia brethren to command the heights of the Russian Federation and used illicit funds and secret deals to attack democracy, both internally in the country itself and abroad. My name is Bhavan, and in this episode of Books in 5, we review Putin's People by Catherine Belton. We trust Catherine because she is an investigative journalist who has covered Russia for decades for a number of publications. She is intimately familiar with the business environment in Russia, and she was able to interview several of the people who have first-hand knowledge of the events at the center of this publication. This book uncovers the deep state in Russia and how they surfaced after a decade in the shadows to take total command of the country by 2020. The security services had set up a parallel network of economic activities after the fall of the Soviet Union and lay in waiting while the shock of the privatizations in the 90s led to a small number of new oligarchs to grab control of the vast wealth of the country. With many Russians hoping for stability, Vladimir Putin took power in 2000 and has spent the past 20 years either defeating or co-opting these new elites, but this has not led to a more secure or prosperous nation. Instead, Putin and his associates have accumulated a tremendous amount of economic control over the natural resources of the country, with the author showcasing how Putin's people have used this wealth to both live lavish lives and to subvert versus the democratic nations of the West. The Soviet Union was on its last legs in the 1980s, and some officers in the intelligence service recognized this as the right time to establish contingency plans. Russians wanted democracy, as they were sick of communist rule and the abuses of the hated KGB. Yet, the citizens of Russia experienced an even worse quality of life in the 1990s, as economic and political life was anarchic, as there was a concentration of wealth in the hands of a small number of forward-looking entrepreneurs on one hand and Kremlin insiders on the other. With Russia transitioning to a more capitalist-based society, the book illustrates how the West let down its guard after it felt it had won the Cold War. During this time, Vladimir Putin, who had spent his career as a KGB officer in Germany, moved to St. Petersburg and took control of the municipal government, where he used his contracts in the security forces to pull strings in the mayor's office for local mafia groups. Eventually, he maneuvered his way into Moscow and into the good graces of President Yeltsin, and then won a controversial election after scandals and economic turmoil had rocked the country. Over the past two decades, Putin has used the power of the state and law enforcement to push out the oligarchs who made their fortunes in the 1990s. Whether through threats, jail time, or relationships with organized crime, the author describes how the entirety of Russia's economy is now controlled by security forces. In addition to consolidating power and wealth at home, Putin realized that many individuals in positions of power in the West would go for their own financial interests. They were willing to betray their own nation to get rich. Whether during the tension with its neighbor in Ukraine, the Brexit vote, or bribing Donald Trump, the book concludes by outlining dirty money made by the kleptocracy in Russia is now used to undermine democracy of Russia's enemies. Russia is now a mafia state. As long as Putin and his people have power, the state will continue to rob its own people at home while destabilizing the world around it. I highly recommend reading this book to learn more about this topic.